59 says solve each equation. Be sure to determine and check all of the solutions. Let me underline all of the solutions. So these are equations that involve absolute value. And the strategy we've been talking about is get the absolute value portion of the equation isolated and then consider using looking inside and asking yourself what are the values that the thing inside the absolute value could be. So let's take a look at uh, the first one here, A, to kind of show you what I mean. So this is the absolute value of 9 plus 3x is 39. Well, th there are two things that this 9 plus 3x could be, right? This could either be positive 39 or it, or it could be negative 39. And the reason why is because if I take the absolute value of positive 39, I get 39. And if I take the absolute value of negative 39, I also get 39. So we're going to write two equations that represents these two pieces of information. So the first thing I'll write down is I'll write 9 plus 3x is, and I'll write the negative one first, negative 39. Or it could be the case that 9 plus 3x is positive 39. So to solve for x, I'm going to do the same thing twice. Um, well, yeah, I am going to I am going to follow the same solution technique, but because one starts with negative 39 and one starts with positive 39, we're going to get different answers. So on this first one, I'm, I've got the negative 39, and I'm going to subtract 9 from that. And when I do, I get that 3x is negative 48. And if I divide that by 3, I would, oh, that actually goes in evenly, right? x is negative 16. Okay, or the other possible value that x could be, right? That's 1. It could be negative 16. Or if I take the 39 and subtract 9, I get that 3x is 10. And if I divide both sides by 3, I get that x is I jumped ahead of myself a lot. No, Mr. Roberts, if you take away 9 from both sides, you get that 3x is 30, right? I take away 9 from both sides. Then if I divide both sides by 3, I get that x is 10. So these are the two values that I believe are solutions, right? Either x is negative 16 or x is 10. And if I consider both of those, um, we could we could check those and see if they work. Um, although I probably, for reasons of order of operation, I should use a scientific calculator. So let me switch this from standard to scientific. And you know I'm going to be using like the calculator in my and actually this is Windows 10 right now. The calculator in whatever OS I'm in, and I'll be doing that a little bit more because I know that not everyone has a TI 80. 84 plus calculator and if you're not in class I want you to be able to you know be comfortable with whatever calculator you've got so I'll just check both of these I'm going to go 9 plus uh, 3 times 16 and then you just grab this negative symbol right so this is 9 plus 3 times negative 16 and I get negative 39 and when I take the absolute value of that I get 39 and the other one is uh, the other value that we got was 10. So yeah, if I go 9 plus 3 times 10, guess what this is going to say? Surprise, surprise, it's 39 also, absolute value. So that is the uh, first one there, and we did that, and we checked our work too. So let's take a look at this. So again, looking inside, the question is, what can this thing be? Well, this can either be negative 10 that would produce an absolute value of which would produce 10 or this could be positive 10 so we'll just write both equations so we'll write negative 3x plus 9 is negative 10 or negative 3x plus 9 equals positive 10 if I take away 10 from both sides or 9 rather from this from both sides here uh, this becomes negative 3x equals negative 19. And if I divide both sides by negative 3, I get x is 19 thirds. And that's a fine answer. I, that clearly doesn't go in there. 19 is prime. And then, or the other possible solution is negative 3x equals, mm, this would just be the number 1. Therefore, 
x would be negative one third. So there's two possible things, right? X could be x could be nineteen thirds, or x could be negative one third. So let's go ahead and plug both of those in and check. And again, I'll just grab this calculator here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab. Uh, let me clear this. I'm going to grab three, make it negative. So there's negative three. I'm going to multiply that by 19 divided by 3. And then I'm going to add to that the number 9. When I do that, I get negative 10. Absolute value of negative 10 is 10. And then the other value was negative 1 third. So again, I'll grab, there's my 3, make it negative. I'm going to multiply that by 1 third. Clearly, if I multiply by 1 third, that's going to make just the number shazam negative one. Mm. Oh, that's my bad. I'm supposed to multiply by negative one third. Let me do that again because that wasn't going to work, right? Negative one third is my x. I'm going to go three. There's the opposite of it. So three negative times um, one. I'll take the opposite of that. Divide that by three. There we go. That's three times. Uh, negative one third, which is, watch it, positive one and positive one plus nine is 10, and the absolute value of 10 is 10. Perfect. So that checks as well. Last problem absolute value of x plus three is negative two. So I'm going to play the same game, and uh, maybe you. There's a cautionary tale here. Maybe you're saying, no, Mr. Roberts, don't do it. But I'm going to go ahead and just bound on. Like, I'm not noticing anything interesting. Uh, I'll say, oh, this could be two things. Either this is going to be a positive 2 or this could be a negative 2. And then I might stop myself and say, wait a minute. If I take the absolute value, if I take the absolute value of positive 2, do you know that that's equal to 2? And I take the absolute value of negative 2, that's also equal to 2. So how is it that you propose that you're going to ever get the number negative 2? And I can't, right? I can I cannot think about this, and I can just go ahead and solve it mindlessly. And I'm going to get two answers, but those answers won't work, right? So let me kind of mindlessly show you what you might might do if we're, if we're not thinking about this. I could write x plus 3 is negative 2 or x plus 3 is po is equal to positive 2. And if I solve that by taking away 3, I get x is negative 5. And over here, I do this. I get x is negative 1. Oh, x is negative 5. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Minus 3x would be negative 5. And then I do this, x would be negative 1. So here's the problem I have, though. If I take negative 5 and put it in there, that becomes negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2. And the absolute value of that is 2, not negative 2. So there's no way I could take the absolute value of something and get a negative value. So this this equation, although you know I, I may have not noticed it and I may have carelessly went through and did this right here, the truth is, mm -mm, nope, there's just no solution. So kind of, you'll see this pop up, things like this, even with inequalities occasionally. Just kind of look at it and say, hmm. Can I have an absolute value that's less than a negative number? Is it possible to have an absolute value that's smaller than a negative, or in this case, equal to a negative? Just some things to think about. All right, that's it for this question. This was, my gosh, what question was this? This was wonderful question number 59.